Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Game to the Com video, we're going to be discussing Intel's roadmap for the next couple of years, thanks to a series of leaks. This roadmap from 2016 to 2018 details Cable Lake, Coffee Lake, and Cannon Lake range of processors. Now, most of this, of course, can be attributed to Intel probably being at least a little concerned about AMD's upcoming Zen lineup of processors, especially for the desktop, for example, Summit Ridge. So let's start with Kaby Link because the 2016 to 17 roadmap is pretty much littered with it. There are a couple of big notes with Kaby Lake. The first, as I just mentioned, is it inherits much of the technology from Skylake. So there are a couple of iterations. The first would be for laptops and mobile devices. So for example, KB Link Y, which is Core M series, is going to be offered in just a 4.5 watt SOC design with a GT2 level graphics card. Whereas uh, KB Link U uh, powers things up to 15 and 28 watts and is available with a GT3E graphics card. The E is pretty interesting because it signifies that you're going to be receiving embedded DRAM cache which is obviously pretty critical for applications which require hefty amounts of graphics bandwidth. So basically Cable Lake H however is going to be designed for high performance notebooks and that type of uh, usage scenario and once again is going to be offered in up to a 45 watt package. As one can probably see it will still feature two or four cores depending on the variant that you're going through. Unfortunately, clock speeds are not currently known, which is a bit of a sad thing, but it is what it is. Now, I do want to briefly discuss Kaby Lake for the desktop. So, Kaby Lake for the desktop is not exactly debuted at the moment, to say the least. Intel have made a couple of whispers themselves that we'll be seeing the uh, formal release and introduction of it early next year and originally from what we understand it was supposed to be released Q4 2016 but obviously it's no longer happening and Intel are now going to be unveiling it formally at CES 2017. From what we can piece together there are going to be several desktop SKUs and these are going to fall alongside a couple of different chipsets. They would be the Z270, the Z270, the H270, and finally the H110 chips. And obviously during the CES event, you can expect these various uh, board partners of Intel. So for example, MSIs and Asus and whoever else to be showing their range of products and saying, hey, look at me, I've got the super overclocked version, which you know has a blue you know, north bridge. For what we can understand, the 200 series will have most of the same technology that Skylake has. The primary difference for most is it's going to support Intel's Optane technology, which basically means that we can start seeing ridiculous performance from SSDs and memory solutions thanks to Intel's 3D point memory technology. How much that's going to cost them, whether it's going to be even slightly viable in terms of performance for the average person is down to your uh, well, down to your um, wallets, basically. But we'll find out, of course, over the next several months. And now, the processor which I'm most interested in for the desktop enthusiast would be Coffee Lake. So, as most folks know, the problem of Intel's current lineup of CPUs, and this goes for the 4770K, the 6700 set, the 6700K, the even the upcoming 7700K, all of the processors are four cores with two threads per core, so you've got eight threads total, which is kind of paltry, especially when you put them up against um, AMD's upcoming Summit Ridge lineup of processors. Coffee Lake is a bit of a different, uh, bit of a different beast because, from what we understand, it's going to be the first set of desktop CPUs which is going to offer an increased core count of up to six cores per CPU. Now I admit that's not as many as eight but still assuming it's set at a decent price point and assuming once again we see good performance per thread then it's still a pretty nice processor indeed. And finally we should talk about Canon Lake. So Canon Lake, which is going to be debuting in 2017-18, to is going to be 
the first architecture designed on 10nm, assuming there's no delays and slipping, of course. And what this processor, what this chip is going to be, is ultra low TDP. It's basically just going to require 5.2 watts TDP, which is very minimal. It's a very slight increase over current 14nm processors, but from what we understand, this should be fairly heftily offset by much faster clock speeds and better GPU for faster performance if that's what's required for that particular device. What's my take on all of this? Well, it remains to be seen what happens. Personally, I would kind of like to see Intel rabbit punched by Zen. I'm not saying that I'm expecting Zen to beat Intel in every single area because if it does, it would be a miracle and I would be... I actually wouldn't like that, to be honest, if AMD beat Intel on every single thing because it wouldn't be good for us as customers. It would mean basically that every one of my videos or every one of my responses are buy this Zen processor, buy this different Zen processor, buy this different Zen processor. It's not good. It basically means that you get the same situation Sony are going through right now with Microsoft where Sony have just basically become complacent. And I don't think that's good for the industry. And Intel def definitely right up until, say, a year ago, we were extremely complacent. So, personally, I would like there to be different scenarios for different processors and all of that stuff. I have to say that I really wish Coffee Lake was available by, let's say, mid-next year. I think it would be fascinating for the industry, and I think it would be absolutely fantastic for us as customers to say, hey, we've got this other alternative to, um, to Zen. But as it is, it's not. So I have a sneaking suspicion that for folks really needing a lot of processor threads and maybe at a decent price, Zen is going to be pretty excellent. But ultimately, we're not seeing benchmarks of Zen and we're not seeing benchmarks of all of these other various processors from Intel. So my suggestion to you, probably wait a couple of months, see what happens with KB, see what happens with Zen, make your decision from there. But with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.